Hello YouTube modelers, welcome back to my channel. I want to thank all my viewers and subscribers for tuning in. So, quick bench update, or more importantly, um, let's do a few shop cart shout outs. I received a shop cart from Gilbert, or Gilly, as he likes to be called, Model Tank Guy Models. Um, he does mostly military, like tanks, airplanes, but he also builds NASCAR, some trucks and car models as well so um, nice card I like his recovery vehicle here modern day recovery I think that's the Stug and a bunch of these I guess the equivalent to like egg planes but they're like egg tanks or little mini cartoon tanks toon tanks that's what it's been called anyway Gilly thanks for the shop card Thanks for the words in the back. I receive his business card size um, and also a sticker. So thanks Gilly for the shop card and for the words in the back. Um, I also received a shop card from Chris, CB Model Works. Very nice card. I, I don't know my 30s Fords, so I assume that's like a 32 three window coupe this looks like a 69 or 70 Firebird and what looks to be possibly a Nissan Skyline um, but go check out Chris at CB Model Works he builds a lot of cars but he recently um, got a few 172 scale planes so I look forward to that because I always like to see the full spectrum or range of everyone's um, model kit building from figures cars planes naval ships and everything so thanks for the shop card Chris and for the words kind words in the back and I will have both Gilly and Chris's link to their channel in my description thanks a lot guys next up so just to let you guys know um, I'm kind of in the middle of trying to clean up so I'm trying to toss out a lot of stuff move some stuff from storage once I move the stuff from storage I'll be able to show you some, some more of my older bills but also one thing I've been trying to do is condense all my pictures and things I want to save and pretty much just scan them and keep them a digital copy instead of the hard copy so to diminish the amount of junk that I have. So next up I want to do a quick unboxing of this Bronco kit that I won from Ed's Garage. Well, let's just take a quick look at it. Um, 2021, fairly recent. Blue with white top. Looks very nice. With the swing spare tire rack. And this kit is kind of the box. I actually had to switch the bottom of the box because the original one was so tight. So let's take a quick look at it. You have the instruction sheet. Wow, a lot of nice parts, all individually wrapped. Okay, so let me pause it, open them, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. So let's take a quick look at all the parts. So we'll take a look at the body because that's the biggest and the easiest. Um, as I was opening, this seems like a lot of tension on the Bronco. Like the AMT came out with the 2021, and then I think it was Ravel that came out with that dune buggy trailer and half Bronco cab. So. Bronco has been pretty prominent in the model kit selection. So you have a molded battery in that looks like what a voltage regulator or something on top of that wheel well. Um, some other stuff I can't identify. A lot of times when I go through these parts reviews I'm actually looking at the parts for the first time with you so a lot of times I do misidentify them and then learn about them as I proceed with the kit. And that looks like a hood that keeps the hood down the locking mechanism it's a pretty small kit essentially really a two door what, what I guess a flip up back seat but it's really like a half cab anyways kind of small so anyway it's a nice Ford raised molding in the back 
raised side lights, reflectors, side lights, side markers. Hinges on the outside. Holes for the probably door handles. I like that you're not attaching the side windows to a smooth side, so that looks like it's been marked for something. Okay, so that looks nice. You get the top. I have to do more research to see whether this is cloth or metal. Probably metal. It's got the shades. So let's look at the parts. Looks like hubs, radiator hoses, interior seats. Maybe the roll bar, and the lights, axle, differential, probably the front and rear because it's four wheel drive. The uh, steelies with that big locking hub, I remember those from the 70s, remember it was manual locking. You had to come out and lock it or some of them you had to reverse certain amount of feet to lock it into place before moving forward so that's probably the front hub and it's probably the back now it's all electronic you just press the button or you get the automatic terrain sensor or whatever so this is dash good raised detail radio we'll see if the decal sheet has the dials. That's the underneath chassis. Oh, this is the inside. So the Ford is in reverse because if it's a big piece of stamped steel, the inside would be the reverse. That looks like the back seat. Very thin, like a jumper seat. Steering column, steering wheel. very nice there are ridges in the seats so add some texture to it some more chassis you get the frame exhaust dual exhaust and of course the big off-duty leaf springs it looks like some kind of steering rod Steering mechanism. There you have what looks like the differential covers. Move this out of the way so you guys can see it better. Some kind of springs, coil springs. I'm a little confused because I thought I saw leaf springs, but maybe it's. Oh, it's probably front coil rear leafs. Steering. Engine parts. Those big, thick, girthy off road shocks. That looks like their radiator frame. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. And then some more seat backs, hood with the vent. Oh, I'm pretty impressed. The vents are molded open. So you don't have to put panel lines to fool it. It's actually open. Okay, pretty good. That's nice. Then of course the windshield frame interior door cards or pedals with the clutch this time I actually opened the clear glass for you to see plain of course you get the quarter vent windows probably have to highlight that at post right here the 
Now let's take a look at the chrome. I like the Ford grill. Look at that. I will have to spray it over with either clear coat or dull coat, depending on which way I want to go. I never leave chrome as is from the factory because it looks too toyish. So I'll either coat it with gloss coat or dull coat. Dull coat will give it more of an alloy look and gloss coat will maintain the shine, but it will dull it down somewhat, but still maintain a slight gloss. But I never use the chrome as is. I always coat it with something, clear or dull coat. Those are hubcaps. I probably will use them or you could probably just leave them with the steely look. Bumpers. The back. The grill is molded open. So that's very good. Tires. I will not remove them from the bag, but they look like they are non they're not marked. So I do have a lot of decals. I have BF Goodrich, I have Good Years, so I can always just use decals for it. But a very aggressive off-road tire with big shoulder treads. So very good tires. In there was also a Revel, Revel or Revel advertisement for the paints. I do have tin and I do have the plastic. The paints are pretty good. Um, I have an enamel in the tin can and I use their acrylic in the plastic container. The plastic container is very easy to twist off. The only thing is it does kind of stick to the sides or the lid. Over here it's like any other house paint when you buy the gallon of paint. You always gets kind of messy with the ridge over here. That's the only thing. I still like the way Tamiya, um, the caps are, you know, it's much cleaner. But anyway, contact cement. I have never used any of these, but I've heard good things about their contact cement and, of course, their um, paint removal. But I haven't used all their products. Let's look at their decal sheet. That looks like the seat pattern. That's for the back tailgate and the side panels, the Colorado plates. That looks like probably on the hood, the Ford, and of course the 302. Engine, air cleaner, auto light, Ford auto light, decals, the Bronco nameplate. That's probably the small one is probably on the dash, probably. That's good that they give you. The Ford in black or white, depending if you're going to spray paint it in dark color or light color. So that's always a good choice. And lastly, let's take a look at the instructions. So I did start to label the paint. Of course, the paint is in lettering. And ident part identification, it goes up to 137, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has 137 parts because sometimes they skip some parts or they exclude it because it's for other models. So here's the engine. And like I said, I already pre-labeled, identified all the letters already. Very nice. Doesn't seem the instructions seem to be a lot, but it's actually not because each step is only a few parts. It's not like one exploded view and there's like multiple multiple pieces. So it looks like a lot of pages, but in actuality, it's because they broke it down to one or two pieces per step. Very nice. Instructions always look easy until you start to do the work and then things will happen. Parts don't fit. Paint gets smeared. Model glue on the paint. 
I got plus the very last page with the decal placement. So from here, I will wash the pots in dishwashing detergent, clean it of this releasing agent, and then take it from there. Maybe spray some colors. I still don't know what colors I'm gonna spray it. Possibly the box art blue, but who knows. I'm gonna look at my spray cans. I do want this to be a spray can job, but I might have to airbrush it too. I don't know, I'll look at the colors. I haven't decided yet. A lot of times I don't know what I'm gonna do until I actually get to that step. So, I'm also going to be unboxing in another separate video, my race truck. I will not include in this one, it will be too long. See you soon.